I've got the two cut ends of the thread together and you can give them a little haircut because if they're fuzzy at all it's going to be really hard to get through the needle. So there we go, the two cut ends are through the needle. Pull that all down. So now we've got a quadrupled thread. Run your fingers along that a couple times to make sure the threads are all nicely even. And then at the ends here I've got the two cut ends and the loop. How I tie the knot is really fast. I wrap it around my finger and off my nail so there's like a number six there. And then instead of putting that tail through once, you can put it through twice or you can roll it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth so you get a big messy bunch of thread and then pull that whole big mess down with your thumbnail so you get that nice big fat knot right so most of the time when people are learning how to sew on a button they would use a double thread like this now that's going to take you twice as many stitches through the button to have the same strength as what we're going to get with our quadruple thread and another thing that most methods of sewing on a button will show you is starting at the back like this right so that your knot is sitting on the back the way I'm going to show you, we're going to be starting on the front so that the button is going to hide that knot. With my quadruple thread with a nice big fat knot on the end, I'm going to make a little stitch right where I want that button to sit. And the knot is going to get hidden by the button. So I'm going to come up the back of the button and then down the button and into that same stitch and my needle goes in and back out. I never draw my needle out the back of the fabric like that because it's just much neater to be going in and out in the same spot each time. On that first stitch, it, cut, it likes to tangle up underneath, so just make sure it doesn't get tingly. And then again, up the button, down the button, and in through that same stitch. Now there's eight threads holding it. With one more stitch, I can have 12 threads holding it. 12 threads is making that really strong. So I wanna create a little bit of space between the fabric and the button. This would be for a shirt where the fabric is quite thin. I don't need a big gap under my button, but I'll show you how to create that in a minute. So just for a regular shirt weight, I'm gonna just wrap that tight one, two, three times under the button, really tight. And then to tie my knot, I go sideways in, all that stitching, draw my needle through until that loop forms. And again, this is another place where it might like to tangle on you, so just be careful it doesn't get tangly here. Put your needle back through that loop, pull that tight, do that a second time. So needle goes through sideways underneath, pull tight till that loop forms, and put your needle through the loop, and pull tight and that's the same kind of knot we use on all hand sewing i like to just go through one more time before i cut my thread just so there's a little space between my knot and the snip okay so that is really nice and strong it was super fast and look how nice and neat the back is because every time i went through i went through in the exact same spot so now let's say you have a thicker fabric and you want to create a space underneath so that a coat or a jacket can button up underneath. Same idea. I'm going to start exactly the same way. And now this button is a four hole button. First one was a two. So it's the exact same thing. But instead of going three times through, I'm going to go twice on each set of buttons. So a little stitch, knot is on the outside. Now you can go um, in a diagonal to make like an X or parallel to make an 11. I'm just used to doing an 11, so I'm gonna go in the one, the hole below and stitch in the exact same spot again. But as I'm drawing the thread through, I don't wanna pull it tight yet. I'm gonna take a toothpick or a couple of matches or um, like a big darning needle and just put that under that loop of thread and then pull it tight. So this is gonna be creating that extra space we need. Now I'm coming up the button again, up the button, down the button around that toothpick, in the same stitch again. But now this time I'm gonna aim for the other two. So up there, down here, in the same spot. And then one more time. So that is just twice through each set of holes. But that is 16 threads holding this button on and then coming out underneath again. 
So I've pulled my thread tight against the toothpick. So now I'm going to slide out that toothpick and we lift the button up. And that's what creates the space underneath. And now instead of wrapping just three times, I'm going to do more. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven should do it so that that button sits up tall like that. And then putting for the same knot, putting my needle sideways underneath. There's that little loop. Don't let it get tangled. Pull tight, do it a second time, back through the loop. And then one more time through before I cut. Good. One last thing I wanna show you is a shank button. Sometimes you have a button like that where there's no holes on the top. There's just one hole underneath and it's the exact same thing where I'm gonna make a little stitch, put my needle through the hole in the shank and then through my fabric in the exact same place. Pull that again. You know, goes through the hole, through the fabric, through the hole, through the fabric that last time. Now this time we don't have to do a little wrap because the wrap is just lifting the button off, but this one has the shank already lifting it. So I don't have to do the wrap. I'm just going to come in sideways to tie my knot and pull that tight one more time back through the loop and then one more time before I cut. Good. Okay, so three buttons, nice and fast, nice and strong, and look at the back. It's really nice and neat. We just get that one little tick where the button sits. 